Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd and Creo. We are continuing our Budget Interesting Commander series. This time we are looking at EDH Rex Artifact Commanders, so the Budget Artifact Commanders. Oh, as usual, I mean two, under $2 when I say budget, so very, very budget. The Artifact Theme. This is one, artifacts, of course, are one of the main uh, card types in the game. So an artifact theme gives you a very wide kind of versatility to build around. Um, you're really not pigeonholed into anything, even with something like Aristocrat. You're kind of, there's a, a lot of things where you're maybe limited a lot more, but with artifact, it's such a pro, it's almost not even really a theme. It's so vague and so open-ended that you can do almost anything with it. Hit like and subscribe. It really makes a big difference. And if you have some kind of idea or something you would like to see, please let me know. I do just about everything you guys say. Every suggestion that's made, I end up making. Well, a lot of times people are like you should do an episode on this. I make a whole series out of it. But I listen is the point. In the ninety-nine. Okay. Country Inspector. This is a big one. For three, this is a three-two artifact creature. Artifact spells you cost or you cast cost one less to cast, which is a really weird sentence now that I read it out loud. This is something I've read so many times and I realized or I didn't realize it said cast cost one less to cast. Cast cost one less to uh, it's a tongue twister. Anyway, 25 cents. Thought monitor. This is so good. I think I didn't realize how good it was at one point. Six and a blue. Sounds bad. For this artifact creature, a 2-2 flyer. It has affinity for artifacts. So for each artifact you control, cost drops by one. So if you have six artifacts, you cast this for one blue. It can, it can be six like clues. Clue tokens. Hey, you're done. Um, wow. A 2-2 flyer for one is crazy. Also, when it enters the battlefield, draw two cards. A 2-2 flyer that draws you two cards very easily for one mana. Oh boy, 77 cents only. Next up, a lot of these you're looking at decks where you're going to build, like, artifact creatures are a big part of it because you want the hybrid. Anyway, Steel Overseer, only two mana for this, one, one. You can tap them, put a plus one, plus one on each artifact creature you control. Each. A lot of these will say each other. This does not. This says each. So he's going to make himself bigger along with everyone else, which is very nice because if, there's, if they're going to use some kind of damage removal, it makes it more likely he's going to be able to stick around, right? Somewhat more likely. I guess if it's like his fourth turn or fifth turn, maybe safer. But anyway, 50 cents. Number five. Inkskur Iron Eater. Okay, he is in 1,642 decks. He is six and Rakdos, so black red. Sales. Not good, right? Hmm, we'll see. Affinity for artifacts. Affinity. Oh boy, affinity is big on this list. There's two commanders with affinity. Affinity in commander is so good because affinity works against commander attacks. So again, if you have, um, let's say he's gotten taken out, you have eight artifacts of whatever kind. Artifact land, artifact creature, artifact tokens. If you've got eight all together, you can still cast him for two mana, even if it's his second casting. Um, especially on commanders, it's crazy because like as the game goes on, you're gonna get more and more artifacts, and that's gonna keep like allowing you to recast your commander without having to worry about any additional cost. It's crazy. Anyway, when he enters the battlefield. Draw X cards and you lose X life, or X is half the number of artifacts you control, rounded down. So this is really big on drawing cards, which is something every deck needs, especially if you're doing a Rakdos deck. Rakdos is not great at card draw. Red is... Mm, 
red and black do have card draw options. They're not ideal, right? It's not blue. Anyway. Uh, also, for three in a red, sacrifice an artifact. This does not require that you tap it, right? So you can just keep doing this. If you have mana, you can keep doing it. Imskur deals damage equal to the sacrifice mana artifact's mana value to any target. So if you have a way to keep pulling some kind of high CMC artifact out of the graveyard and throwing it back on the battlefield, this can be very effective. This is not what I was looking at, so yeah. What I was really looking at was like effects that give bonuses off of card draw that will be helpful as well, but that's once again not what I was doing. Affinity. I was looking at affinity things anyway. 25 cents? So yeah. Is to get your affinity? Dark Steel Citadel. Indestructible. Artifact land. Artifacts land lands are more risky because it has artifact. That means anything that says destroy target artifact is also going to be removal for your land. Indestructible gets around that. Very important. Anyway, you can tap to add one colorless. Usually colorless, you don't care. Artifacts, it's great. Anyway, 75 cents. Metalwork Colossus. This is 11 for a 10-10, which sounds bad again, but it costs X less to cast, where X is the total mana value of non-creature artifacts you control. So they do have to be non-creature artifacts, but even if you've got like three mana rocks, three mana rocks might be between six and nine mana. That is going to be cost reduction. And yeah, so you're casting this 10-10 for maybe, yeah, five to two mana or even potentially zero. If you've got enough of those mana, or you've got enough of those artifacts down, you're gonna be paying just throwing this on the battlefield for free. Oh wow, wow. Anyway, 50 cents. I feel like, have, have I not seen, I have seen that card before, but anyway. Final, finally, Cranial Ram for Rakdos. Again, black and a red. It is an equipment, equip two, and a living weapon also. So it comes in as its own, basically makes a creature token, a zero zero token that it attaches itself to, and then you can use that to attack. So it gives plus X plus one, where X is the number of artifacts you control. This command is gonna be all about getting those artifacts, and then you cast him and you take damage, but you're just gonna draw the, a pile of cards. Um, things that let you gain life. I didn't do life gain here because it's... I'm gonna focus on one thing at a time. This one is the build would be kind of all over the place. I feel like that's a bit of a downside, but if you can just even like make sure you're getting your life gain and artifact artifacts down and life gain, that's not a hard thing to do. That's what I focus on there. Anyway, 15 cents for cranial ram. Throw it on your commander, and you're doing commander damage very quickly, right? Number four. That's in Gnome Champion. Okay, here's a weird one. He's in 6,225 decks. He is Jeskai, so blue, red, white. Only blue. Three casting costs, not bad. Whenever Tetsin or another double face artifact enters the battlefield under your control, mill three cards. You may put an artifact card from among them into your hand. So he is throwing things in the graveyard. That may sound like a bad thing, but we're going to see why it's good. Craft with six artifacts for four mana. So for four mana, you can exile six artifacts from your graveyard, and then he's going to transform. Okay, so let's take a look at what he transforms into. The Golden Gear Colossus. So this is a legendary artifact creature gnome. He's 6-6, six, six, not bad. Vigilance and Trample, even better. And whenever the Golden Gear Colossus enters the battlefield or attacks, transform up to one target double face creature artifact, oh, sorry, artifact you control, not creature. Uh, create two one one colorless gnome artifact creature tokens. So he's just gonna start allowing you to transform all of your uh, your artifact creature tokens this can be a huge advantage some of them are pretty amazing anyway 59 cents only so again 
to having things again you're going to need stuff in your graveyard to be able to exile so if you want some stuff there you get bonuses for just like being able to have things in your graveyard right and unidentified mother sh or sh hover ship i keep calling it mothership i don't know why one white white two two flyer and when it enters the battlefield exile it to one target creature with toughness five or less so you can just exile a creature on top of having a fly a 2-2 flyer for three mana even though it's limited to toughness five or less that's really really good and then when it leaves the battlefield ex the exile cards owner manifest dread so they basically get a face down card they look at the top two cards of their deck and they put one of them into the battlefield face down which they can cast it can be a bit of a gamble i guess but if you're taking out a big you know a high priority threat it's going to be worth it like every time i think anyway 40 cents for that one next we have uh matt Zal i can never say these matt Zalantil tilly lantilly lantil lantilly anyway uh the great door <sighs> three mana for a legendary artifact you can tap it draw a card then discard a card and for four you can tap and transform it activate only if there are four or more permanent types among cards in your graveyard so for 116 let's see what it transforms into again your commander is going to let you transform this a core add x mana of any one color where x is the number of permanent cards in your graveyard just permanent cards in your graveyard it doesn't matter what kind of permanent just any permanent card so not instant or sorcery um pretty much everything else is going to count as like a mana source for you now colored mana source of your choice Ooh, that's a lot of a lot of fixing anyway for three white white is another artifact here when it enters the battlefield if you cast it for each player choose a creature that with power two or less that player controls destroy all creatures except creatures chosen this way so this is going to be like a selective board wipe that is going to keep some of their stuff alive unfortunately but still it can be very good and craft with artifact three white white so for three white white exile this artifact exile another artifact you control anyway basically craft with one artifact but we're not going to do that we're going to cheat and like be able to flip it over without having to be able to exile things or having to exile things okay tan swirl wander glyph this one's so nuts so artifact creature flying five three whenever an opponent casts a spell during their turn they can't attack you or a planeswalk you control this turn this is amazing not just for this i ordered this immediately when i saw this any kind of Jeskai Super Friends deck, get this card. They cast any spell, they can't attack you. They just can't attack you. It's not like they gotta pay two or some nonsense. It's not Pillow Fort. It's just can't attack you. Straight up, not allowed to. Each opponent who attacked you or a Planeswalker you control this turn can't cast spells. So if they do attack you, they can't cast any other spells for the rest of the turn so probably don't want to attack you right amazing 30 cents how is that only 30 cents mm. number three okay we've got yeah ethereum cheaper this is one you've probably mostly seen before right so 9743 i'm looking to do my budget decks i've got to do all of the four colored commanders so i'm probably going to do this is i think what is this called? Uh, there's no green. Uh, which is that again? You know, your tiller? Is this your tiller? I could be wrong. I shouldn't even try. I get confused too easily. Anyway, so everything but green in the casting cost. And color identity for that matter. So when she enters the battlefield, create two blue, one, one blue throfter creature tokens with flying. And for two mana, sacrifice two artifacts, choose one. She does three damage to target player or planeswalker. Target creature gets minus four, minus four until end of turn. That's removal for almost anything. Even indestructible, doesn't care. It's gone, right? Or you gain five life. 
hopefully you're not using this for the life gain. If you do, you're in trouble, right? It does keep you alive, though. So anyway, yeah. This is all, she's all about getting those, you know, getting those artifacts and getting extra value out of sacking artifacts is what it, she really cares about. Anyway, 49 cents. Okay, so we got Dan Jansen, Chaos Crafter. Um, yeah, he's a uh, red, white, black. So Mardu, good old Mardu, with haste, a 3-3 three, three with haste. Sacrifice an artifact creature, create two treasure tokens. So again, this is very, very good with your commander because you can sacrifice one creature to make two tokens, and then you can sacrifice the two artifacts to for her ability, right? So you're basically using one artifact and two mana, and you can tap two things, or tap one thing and have it ready to go. Or sacrifice a non-creature artifact. Uh, create two 1-1 one, one close construct artifact creature tokens. So once again, he can make your artifacts either way, right? 35 cents, just very good, especially with haste, means he hits the ground running, he's already making your stuff. Turn one. Marionette Apprentice, one and a black for a 1-2, with Fabricate one, so she can make... Fabricate means she either gets plus one, plus one, or you make a servo, an artifact creature. All right, whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Again, so Brea's gonna be no destroying two things every time you activate her ability. It costs you two mana, but if you're, if you're also doing two damage, because as you're sacrificing two artifacts, that pays off very, very quickly, right? 158 for that one. An enthusiastic mechanaut for a blue and a red is a flying artifact. Uh, artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Yeah, 28 cents. Um, you know, a 2-2 two -two flyer that reduces your casting cost. Yeah, sure, I'll take that. Number two. Urza, Chief Artificer. Yeah, we gotta have an Urza. We're talking about artifacts, of course there's gonna be an Urza, right? Mishra is just off the list, barely. He's one spot off of it, so anyway. We got three, white, blue, black. Six sounds not good, but again, affinity for artifact creatures. He is all about artifact creatures. This is like the artifact creature one. We've had our artifact uh, sacrifice, artifact life gain, artifact whatever. But this, he's artifact creature, right? So yeah, he has that affinity that will, once again, reduce his cost. So if you have three artifact creatures, he only costs three to cast. And then to recast, if you have five, you still pay the three. And then if you need to recast him again, seven artifact creatures is really not that hard, especially with token artifact creatures. You can still recast him for that three. Oh boy. Artifact creatures you control have Menace. Menace, I think, is a very unrated form of evasion, but I'm starting to lose the ability to talk. Oh, good. Um, at the beginning of your end step, create a 0, zero colors construct artifact token with this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. So he's going to be making artifact tokens that are going to just hopefully be very, very big as well. Uh, 13,000... 471 decks, much more popular, only 30 cents somehow. Okay, so we've got Ethereum Sculptor, for one in a blue, artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. Yeah, 79 cents. Art He's also an artifact creature, that's an another really nice bit of, you know, plus to him. Psy Master Throptorus. Thropt I had a hard time choosing whether to put Psy on this list or the previous one. Um, I ended up going with this one. I don't know if that's the right call. But anyway. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 one, one Thropter artifact creature token with flying. You Also, you can sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card. So that's kind of what put him on this list, is that if you're sacking artifacts with Brea, you probably want to be activating her, not using the card draw. I would put him in Brea as well, but I didn't put him on the list for that reason. Anyway, 61 cents. Master of Ethereum. Once again, two and a white for a question mark, question mark. 
So it gets, uh, its power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts you control, and other artifacts, creatures you control, get plus one, plus one. Couldn't ask for really anything much better with this deck. Just gonna be so much synergy up and down, like, oh boy. It becomes a lot more about, like, what are you gonna, probably using equipment to, like, enhance and give it even more evasion, things like that. Remember, she's giving everything plus one, plus one. Everything's giving her a boost, and the commander's giving her menace as well. So even one more form of evasion, if you can give her flying or something, probably getting through. Again, someone getting through anyway. 35 cents. Number one. If you can't guess, you probably haven't seen this one before. Marvin, Mur Murderous Mimic. I can barely say that now. It's too many M's. For two, he is in 515 decks, but he's very new. All right, and he's a 2-2. Again, for two mana, not bad. He has all activated abilities of creatures you control that don't have the same name as him. It's Singleton Commander, so that's every creature, right? Um, this is all about just loading up, making sure you have as many activated abilities as possible. And I would look for ways to enhance activated abilities or reduce the cost or produce mana for activated abilities. So activated abilities that help activated abilities, basically. Anyway, $2 for this guy. A Cryptic Prillobite is an XX, and yeah, it enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Again, for every two you cast it for, it gets one plus one plus one counter. You can remove a plus one plus one counter from Cryptic Trillobite to add two mana, but spend this mana only to get activate abilities. So yeah, for every two you get a plus one plus one on him, and then you can remove it and get two mana immediately whenever you want. Also your commander you get to do that as well. And for one and tap you can put a plus one plus one counter on him. So your commander is going to get both that and the remove thing. So yeah. You can potentially activate your command or take plus one plus one counters off your commander to pay for all kinds of abilities that you're going to be able to like just knock down people with very easily. Uh, Triska Lion? Triska Lion? I feel like I'm saying it wrong. Six mana for a 1-1 one, one artifact creature. So it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it, which makes it a little more reasonable. Remove a plus one plus one counter from it, it does one damage to any target. So with both of these, you can remove a plus one plus one if you want to make mana for abilities, or remove a plus one plus one and straight up do damage. Straight, yeah. To any target. Yeah, it is any target. Creature removal, no problem. Player removal, you're gonna get there, right? You'll get there. Finally, that's sorry, that's 25 cents and Ginger Brute, only one mana for this one one with haste. This guy is such I had it one of my students had this in a deck, and it has wrecked me on more than one occasion. So for one, Ginger Brute can't be blocked this turn except by creature with haste. Because he runs runs as fast as he can, right? Anyway, your commander, this is amazing evasion for your commander. Basically, you make it so only creatures with haste can block your commander, and then it's commander damage time, right? You got your plus one, plus one counters. Just double strike somehow. Then ginger root, and you're done. Does your win con. Anyway, 23 cents. A list! Okay. Scar Iron Eater, 25 cents. That's in Gnome Champion, is 30 cents only. Yeah, Ethereum Ch Cheaper is 49 cents. This is one I've seen go up and down quite a bit. There's a Chief Artificer, 30 cents. I should order this before it gets expensive. I feel like it will. Marvin, Murderous Mimic, $2. All right, take it easy.